friends in this video we will study what is the ttt diagram what is the purpose of it then we will discuss what is the meaning of various things that are shown in this ttt diagram and then we will see how we will see the process or procedure of various heat treatment process from this ttt diagram now let us see what is this ttt diagram a TTT diagram is a diagram that has temperature on y-axis and time on x-axis. It tells us following things. It tells us basically uh, when a heated steel sample is cooled slowly in a controlled manner then what are the various microstructure changes or what are the various phase changes that will occur in a steel sample at various interval of time. As the temperature of a steel sample decreases gradually with time, that is, it tells us the various phase transformation that the steel will undergo with the with the time while we cool the steel sample. Now let us see what is the purpose of the TTT diagram, friends. We know that when a steel sample cools slowly, then it undergoes change in microstructure and these microstructure have effect on properties of steel. Also the various microstructure obtained depends on the cooling rate. So the TTT diagram tells us what rate of cooling we should adopt to get the desired microstructure so that we have desired properties. For example if our requirement is hardness as property then we know that martensite is the hardest phase that can give hardness to steel hence we will adopt such cooling rates so that we can get martensite as microstructure so this can be seen through this ttt diagram now various things represented by ttt diagram now we will discuss the various things that this ttt diagram will represent okay or various terms that are shown on this ttt diagram the TTT diagram is also called as S-curve or C-curve diagram. In TTT diagram, the temperature is plotted in y-axis and time on x-axis as shown here. TTT diagram is plotted for a steel sample having particular percentage of carbon. Here we have taken percentage of carbon in steel sample as 0.83% corresponding to eutoctoid composition of the steel and drawn this diagram for that sample. For this sample of steel having carbon percentage is equal to 0.83% we know from iron carbon diagram that austenite phase is stable for steel having carbon percentage equal to 0.83 percent above 723 degree celsius that is for etoctoid composition sample having carbon percentage 0.83 percent austenite phase is stable above 723 degree celsius you can see this from the iron carbon diagram so okay now so here also you can see the austenite phase is there above 723 degree celsius shown by orange color strip so orange color strip here orange color whole region the upper strip and the other region of the which is lying on the left side of the c curve is showing us the austenite region orange color region here shows uh, shows the austenite region okay also orange color region is uh, on the upside and on the left side of the s curve as shown here okay now red color region of the diagram here on the right side uh, correspond, to, correspond to the perlite and the violet color region to the bainite okay and bainite is also called as very fine perlite. Now the area between the C curves as shown has phase mixture of austenite and perlite that is the area between these two curves contain the uh, mixture of austenite and perlite as the phase mixture. The blue color region is of austenite and plus martensite. That is, the blue color region has austenite and martensite as mixture. And martensite region is the area of the strip at the bottom. So, at the bottom of this uh, this diagram, you can see that martensite is there in that region. The 
first C curve shows the start of transformation of mass between the two C curves denote the transformation of austenite to perlite is taking place okay and the second C curve denotes the end of the transformation of austenite to perlite okay now also various straight inclined lines here denoted uh, they denotes the various cooling rate that is the part taken by steel sample during cooling from point A that I will explain in detail in later part of the video. So these lines represent the cooling path of the steep sample which is held at the point A. Okay, we will do, we'll, we'll, we will do the cooling uh, in each for each time we will consider the separate cooling path denoted by these inclined lines. Okay, in this discussion we assume that our steel sample is already heated and is at temperature above 723 degrees Celsius and lying in upper orange strip of the diagram. Now as the sample is in the orange region at point A, so its microstructure is initially austenite because it is lying in the orange region, the point A where the sample is heated up to the point A, the point is lying in the orange region and orange region corresponding to the austenite. So that's why the initial microstructure of the heated sample placed at the point A is austenite. Now we will start cooling our sample at point A and start decreasing its temperature along path AE as shown here. Microstructure of the heated sample placed at the point A is austenite. Now we will start cooling our sample at point A and start decreasing its temperature along path AE as shown here by this arrow. The cooling rate along it, this arrow that is along the path AE is 10 degrees Celsius per second. As we want cooling from point A, we will reach to point B moving along this arrow. As point B is lying in orange region, so the microstructure at the point B will be austenite. Okay. Now moving further along arrow, we will reach to point C. Now, as the point C lies on first C curve, so transformation of austenite phase to perlite starts at the point C. Below point C and D, between sorry, between point C and D, microstructure is mixture of austenite and perlite. That is between point C and D, the portion of the arrow, the transformation is taking place along CD. Okay. Now, because this reason lies between the two C curves at point D, okay. Now, we will see at the point D what is happening at the point D. Now, at point D, the complete transformation of austenite to perlite is completed. And moving further along the arrow, we will enter into perlite region and it is shown by red color region in the diagram. And finally, the arrow ends at point E. And the point E lies in chorus pulverite region, so final microstructure will be chorus pulverite. And this process is called annealing. Okay. If we increase the cooling rate to 50 degrees Celsius per second and go along arrow AH while performing cooling of the sample placed at the point A, having initial temperature above 723 degrees Celsius, slightly above 20, 723 degrees Celsius, and starting from point A, the same procedure we will follow as we have done in the previous case to find out various microstructure at different point of time obtained. The final microstructure obtained in this case will be very fine perlite because end of arrow that is the point H is the end of the arrow lies in purple color reason and purple color reason denotes the very fine perlite that is benite as shown here. The process is this process is called normalizing okay now if we further increase the cooling rate to somewhat around 350 degrees celsius per second then we will start moving along the arrow ap while cooling the sample from point a now move through the arrow ap starting from the point a starting from a and moving to the end of the arrow to the point p we will here while moving uh, we are just skipping the nose of the TDD diagram at point I. This is the point I. You can see that it is just touching the nose or we can say that it is uh, tend to touch the nose of the TDD diagram. 
we are not touching the nose of C curve here. So perlite will not form in this case. Encounter uh, if we go through uh, uh, if we go through the point A and uh, go through go toward the point B, then we will encounter this orange color region, and we will see that the portion of the arrow lying in this orange color region. Uh, have the phase austenite because orange color region correspond to the austenite phase. Now between all the points lying between A and J, sorry, all the points which are lying between the point A and J on the arrow correspond to the austenite because they all lie in the uh, orange color region which correspond to austenite. And at point J, the austenite will start converting into martensite and between point J and Q, all the microstructure will be mixture of martensite and austenite. On cooling further, we will reach at point Q marked by end of the austenite conversion to martensite and we will enter into the bottom strip moving further along the arrow and reach into the martensite region. So the final microstructure will be martensite. This process is called quenching as cooling rate is very high as high as 30 degrees celsius three sorry 350 degrees celsius per second okay as uh, now as here we do not enter into the nose of the ttt diagram while going through this arrow ap so perlite is not formed and this cooling rate along the line ap is called critical cooling rate because by adopting this cooling rate, we will not enter into the C curve and perlite will not form Martin site. Similarly, we can find out various phases obtained while cooling the sample from point A to point N. So when you go through this another arrow starting from point A and ending at the point N along AN, you can apply the same logic that I have explained in the previous case and find out the various microstructure that will exist at various point of time while cooling the sample from the point A to the point N. Also when we cooled steel sample along AE arrow, along AH arrow, along AP arrow and along AN arrow that is when we have cooled the steel sample along all these three paths, along all these four paths then up to point C, F, I, J, J and L respectively. There was no change in microstructure of the steel. The microstructure up to this point was austenite because all these points are at the boundary of the C curve and they are lying in the orange region. Okay, means they are lying on the boundary. You can say that they are lying in the orange region also. Okay. So this uh, time period corresponding to the point C, F, I, J and L is called as the incubation period. That is when you project this point over the X axis that is the time axis then you will find the various time corresponding to these points and these times will be the incubation period for each of the cooling path that we have taken. Okay. And, uh, the phase here at the point C, F and I is austenite and it just going to convert into austenite is just going to convert into perlite when we cross these points C, F, I and J and L while going through the path A, E, A, H, A, P and A, N. So these times I have denoted corresponding to the point C, F, I, J and L while projecting them on the time axis will correspond to the incubation period because this is called as the incubation period because 